I'm Daniel Nisbet, and in this video, we're going to go over what it takes to build an icon font. So right off the bat, one thing you'll notice here is that I am in glyphs. And in this video, we're going to be using glyphs, and I'm also going to be using Affinity Designer. Now, I know many of you running across this video probably are not familiar or maybe don't use Affinity Designer. The equivalent here would be uh, Adobe Illustrator, and if you have that, then that will work just fine for this tutorial. The one thing to note, though, is whatever you're working with in your vector program of choice is that it's an actual vector file. And as you can see here, as I select my, my icon here, uh, you'll notice that I've got the nodes around that that is signifying to me that it is a vector object. But really where most of the magic will be taking place is in glyphs, and the first thing that we're going to do here, uh, after going file and new, which is how I got to this point, is jumping over to the info button here, the little I. Now, when you jump in, you'll be greeted right away with a whole bunch of information asking you for the family name designer and all this kind of fun stuff. And really, I'm just going to keep things simple here. We're not going to go over the top with all these other tabs and whatnot. My goal here is just to get you familiar with working back and forth between something like Illustrator, Affinity Designer, and then bringing something into Glyphs. So to start, we're just going to give this family name a uh, name of icon because it's an icon font. Units per M, we're just going to leave this at 1000 for now. There's really no need to uh, go in and be changing anything like this. For the designer, we'll uh, type in my name there, the URL. We'll just go ahead and put my website in there because why not? And as far as the rest of this goes, you really don't need to worry about this. Uh, like I said, we're just keeping things pretty simple and basic here. So I'm going to go ahead and close all of that. <clears throat> now, next up in an icon font, at least a simple icon font, we really don't need any of, of these characters here. We're not creating a Latin typeface. We don't need numbers. We don't probably need punctuation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a command A to select all and then a command delete on my keyboard. And it's going to ask me if I want to remove all of those and I'm going to say yes. So now what we've got here is just a blank canvas, if you will, uh, that we can start working with. If you've ever worked with something like Font Awesome, for example, you'll know that when you go to actually use the icons in something like CSS, that you're actually typing in a, a Unicode number. And the way we get to that here in Glyphs is um, kind of a little bit tricky, but it'll make sense once we, we go through this here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Glyph, and rather than doing Add Glyphs, which you typically might do, uh, and, and typing out what you're looking for, I'm just going to go to New Glyph here. And so what this will do is this will bring up a new glyph, and it'll bring it up under uh, the other heading here. I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that for a moment. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to type in UNI, and this is going to be the start of our code here. And when I do this, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a pop-down menu here, and it gives you all these different codes that you could go uh, surfing through. Now, the thing to know about icon fonts is that we actually do have a Unicode space that's available to us, and this space is from E000 all the way up to F8FF. Now, if you're like me, really, you're probably not going to be putting in thousands of icons, and if you are, then you're probably well above uh, what this tutorial covers here in terms of knowledge with the glyphs. For the sake of what I do, though, I usually keep things simple and stick with uh, E and then the three zeros after that. And, and before I hit enter here, if I were to go and add more, I'd continue doing this, and I would just increment it, uh, for example, by one or two. There's really no rhyme or reason or uh, any, any reason with, that you would need to start here, uh, but for me, it's just easy to keep it there. So I went ahead and I hit enter, and you'll immediately notice some things change here. Now we're under private use. I still have my, um, my text selection open. I can tap out of that, and I get a little bit of a question mark here. One thing that I like to do if I open this up here is, is you'll notice a couple of things. Unlike a regular letter, which would uh, you know already have some of this pre-filled out, it's stuck with the UNI E000 name here, and I've also got the E and the 000 over here referring to the Unicode space that I'm working in. 
So typically what I like to do, because I like keeping things labeled, which is just easier to find later on if I'm trying to run through and do something, is I'm going to go here and we're just going to call this logo. And this is just a nice way of giving this a nice name. Uh, it still keeps my Unicode space, but now anytime I go back in Glyphs, I can automatically at a glance see that this is my, my logo uh, space here. <clears throat> So at this point, we can go back to your vector program of choice. In this case, I'm going to go back to Affinity Designer here. If you're in Illustrator, you could go back to Illustrator. And one thing I'm doing here uh, that I, I should note is that I'm working in points. So down here in my, my transform, which I will bring this up here, you'll notice that I'm at 27 points. And if you think back to that uh, M units per M setting, uh, one of the things that you saw was that it was 1,000 points per M. So if I were to paste this in right now as it is, it's 27 points across. And in the grand scheme of 1,000 points, 27 seems pretty small. I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to pump that up. And of course, we're going to make sure it does this uniformly up to 600. And of course, this is going to make this very, very big. Uh, but this will make things a lot easier when we move uh, from our vector program into glyphs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that. That's at 600 points. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to paste it in. Now one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is I've got these little orange um, edges here and not really anything to worry about here. I'm just using a plugin called uh, Speedpunk and that's probably for another day but just note that that's not anything you need to worry about here or if you don't see it in your uh, copy of glyphs, that's nothing to worry about. So with everything selected, the first thing that I like to do is go down here to my little grid and I click on the bottom, one of the bottom uh, buttons here. And what I'm looking for here is I'm just making sure that the bottom of my icon is aligned to our baseline, which is this little line that runs, let me zoom in here. It's the little line that runs all the way across here. Think of this as the line that you're writing along if you're uh, writing copy. Uh, the next thing that I'm looking at here is my side bearings. Now, depending on what your uh, use is for your icon, you may decide to not have any side bearings, which basically means that if you were to go through and you were to type this out, it means that when one icon ends, the next one's going to be right up against it. There's going to be no gap between. That's what these zeros on either side of, of this mean here. For me personally, I like to have a side bearing just because that's how I'm used to working with icons and in most cases I'm doing things like uh, maybe adding some spacing or padding around those things if I'm working in the web. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do 50 on each side. And this is just going to give me what would effectively be, if we double this, 100 uh, points of space um, if, if this was to repeat for some reason around my icon. It just helps kind of keep things a little bit neat for me here. So that's really all there is to getting this all set up here. Um, we've got an icon. You can see down in my preview that uh, it, it looks right. It looks uh, how it did if I go back here so we can see. Um, this looks uh, right as to how we did it here. Now in some cases you may run into an issue and I'll just kind of uh, make something up here where um, you might uh, have this inverted or it just doesn't look right and typically uh, the remedy for that is if you select everything I go through and I just say uh, correct path direction. You'll find that more often than not that cleans things up because uh, typically what Glyphs is looking for is that your paths are, are running opposite directions of each other if you want to create like in this case uh, the counter where I have this open space here. If the uh, the number two path, uh, the numbers that it's assigning each of these was running in the same direction as one, then we run into a little bit of an issue where uh, it may look like a solid icon or, or things just don't uh, turn out right. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, and this does depend on how you drew your icon in your uh, illustration program. It does tend to pick up on those things. So that's something just to watch out for to make sure that you've got all set up. So now that we have that done, I'm just going to go back here and we'll notice again now I can see my little icon in the, uh, the private use preview here. And really all that's left to do from here is to go through and to export it. So I'll go up to file and export here. And 
I've got a few different uh, things here. I'm going to go through and do a web font. In my case, I'm going to keep this uh, true type for now. No need to go crazy with things. I believe this is just the defaults that Glyphs sets up for you. Uh, I'm just going to go through and create a WOFF file. I really don't have much of a need myself for the other two options, but if you do, those are available for you to select. Uh, of course, we're going to go through and we're going to export that, which we'll get to in just a moment here. Uh, another thing to note is that I'm also leaving auto hint off as well. That's not something that I really mess with. Uh, in the past, I've typically run into more problems than it's worth trying to uh, work with icon fonts. So we're just going to let that lie and hit next. And from here, we're just going to pop back to my desktop. I'm going to create a handy folder to keep it in. And then we're going to hit export font. Glyphs will do its little magic dance, and if we go to my desktop, we'll notice that uh, once it's all said and done, which is usually pretty quick, that we've got an icon font. So jumping in here then, we're going to do a very quick test, and uh, for the sake of testing here, since we're not really jumping into HTML, I'm not really going to go over this too far in depth, and as you'll notice, there's probably a lot of uh, errors if you're uh, the web developer type around here, but uh, one of the things you'll notice here is uh, I've got a font face set up. I'm just referring uh, to my font file that we, or the icon file that I created here. And in this case, the uh, the index file that I'm, I'm working from here is uh, in the same directory, so we don't need to worry about anything fancy like that. Uh, before I jump into the rest of this, just so you get an idea for the lay of the land here, down in my body copy here, I just have a paragraph tag with the class of logo. I just put DN in there for the sake of having some text in there. And then this is my trick here, where I will go through and I just uh, I set the font size to zero for my logo. This takes this DN and just makes it so you can't see it. And then what we do is we just set uh, something very similar to probably what you've seen with Font Awesome if you've worked with that in CSS. But effectively what we're saying is before this, we're going to create a uh, inline block element. And then this is where we get into the magic, where we call the font family, which is icons, which we call that. The content here, we've got the escape character, but as you remember back in glyphs, that E with three zeros after it is going there. And then in this case, just for the sake of doing something uh, to give it uh, some visual cues on the screen, uh, I just gone and set a color and then a font size and a line height. So if I jump into my browser, this is what we've got. And one of the great things about this now <clears throat> is if we go back here and let's just say we go up to 150, I can go through and I can adjust that. And effectively now you've got yourself an icon font. One of the things that I really enjoy about working with my own icon font over doing something uh, like a prepackaged uh, solution like Font Awesome is I typically find with those uh, icon libraries that they often have way more icons than I want or need. And in worst case scenarios, oftentimes they don't even have the icon that I might be looking for anyway. On top of that, you also run into things like uh, perhaps the design isn't matching the design aesthetic of the project that you're working on, or you've got a, a specific set of uh, parameters that you need to work with. And that's where these icon fonts really, really shine. In my case, I currently relaunched my website as of this video, and as uh, the keen observer may notice that I'm currently using Font Awesome. Uh, I mean, the long story is yes, there are times where something like that is useful, in my case, it was just getting my website going. Uh, however, it is a long-term plan to go through and change those to something a little bit more custom. But for the sake of this video, I really hope this gives you uh, some good insight on what it takes to create an icon font. Uh, like I said, it's really not uh, too heavy or even rocket science-y. And what I love about this is this is just a great way to uh, begin getting yourself familiar with Glyphs, the program, and how to work back and forth between it and a, a vector program like Illustrator. And, and really what I like, especially with somebody who's learning typography or type design, is this is one of those quick wins that I like to call it, where it just gets you rolling and it gets you uh, seeing something that you've created. Uh, one last thing that I will throw in as well, I, I went through and, and went the web route here, but I will also add that you are able to go through and create an OTF version of your font as well. And again, same as a library like Font Awesome. If you were to load this into an app like Illustrator or Photoshop, uh, particularly one that has a glyphs panel in it, 
that you can uh, select all the characters from a font. Um, exporting it as a regular font file for your system works great because you're able just to pop in there and grab what you need. So that is all for this video. If you found it helpful, please smash that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button as I plan on releasing more of these videos in the future.